First, you need to make sure you buy the right size boxes and good quality packaging tape. Don't overstuff your boxes and be sure to, no, 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 that's not what this video is about. We need to talk about the big stuff, the super expensive mistakes you don't wanna make and the stress you wanna avoid. We're talking today about the six mistakes to avoid when moving to Dallas. Oh, and stick around to the end because point number six is the single most expensive mistake relocators make every day. Well, hello, hello, this is Wendy Pinnell and talk about an empty wallet. Moving is expensive and you need to make sure Dallas is really the right place for you. I mean, plenty of people are moving here. Mia Taylor with Bankrate describes how the Lone Star State is one of the most rapidly growing states in the country with the Texas cost of living being one of the top draws for transplants. So let's start there. The first mistake I wanna talk to you about today is making sure you understand the cost of living. Mia gives us some good news. She describes how the cost of a home in Texas continues to be 15% lower than the national average. She continues that that's not the only living expense that's cheaper in Texas. Food and transportation costs are both about 9% lower and healthcare is 5% lower. Finally, she concludes that the cost of living in Texas is 8% lower than the national average. Well, News like that will make anybody's day and explains exactly why more and more people are moving to Dallas all the time. You know, they see a job offer with a higher income, realize there's no state income tax and they start packing the very next day. But you need to be aware that just because Texas has a lower cost of living, doesn't mean Dallas does. And just because Texas has a lower cost of living doesn't mean your state doesn't have an even lower cost of living. Pretty sure I got the grammar wrong on that one. But speaking of the cost of living, Bankrate describes how the cost of living in Texas varies depending on which section of the state you're talking about. And as you might have guessed, Dallas is among one of those more expensive sections in Texas. Adding to the cost of living woes, many people don't realize how high the property taxes are. Bankrate describes how the good news on the tax front is Texas does not charge the residents a state income tax. But then they go on to describe how property taxes in Texas are far steeper than the majority of the country. Related also to property taxes are home prices. Depending on where you're coming from, you may be blown away by the prices of real estate around here. I mean, it's not like we're LA or Manhattan, but if you're coming from Illinois, you're not gonna like the prices here. Similarly, the prices for energy can also knock your socks off, okay? You haven't experienced heat until you've experienced a Texas summer. Bankrate describes how utility bills are a steep 12% higher than the national average. So more expensive, less expensive, make up your mind already. Well, I looked at the regional price parities with the Bureau of Economic Analysis, and it showed Texas as just below the national average, okay? So there are plenty of states more expensive than Texas and plenty that are less expensive, right? So really, what it boils down to here, okay, is you can't afford to generalize. When it comes to the cost of living, you need to compare where you are right now to both Texas, right, and the Dallas area in particular. All right, moving on to mistake number two, let's talk about underestimating your commute. So whether you've been spoiled by, you know, working at home or you've forgotten what traffic is, or maybe you've spent the last 10 years in a small town, let me warn you before your first Monday morning rolls around, okay? Just because your map says your trip to work will only be 20 minutes at 9 p.m. at night doesn't mean it won't be an hour and 20 minutes surrounded by massive 18 wheelers, okay, the very next morning. <laughs> Dallas traffic is bad and you need to prepare yourself for that. A recent traffic study shows that the cost of traffic are more than we might think. The cost includes lost productivity and increases in fuel costs. And out of all of those factors, okay, you're gonna see a direct hit to your bank account in the waste of fuel. According to Go Bank Rates, drivers today waste over 21 gallons of gas waiting in traffic, okay? Also, kind of on this same topic, don't forget to do your research on tolls, okay? Many of the suburbs' main freeways are tollways. This is especially true north of Dallas, okay? We're talking places like Frisco, where the only highway running through the city is a tollway, okay? Be sure to check out the NTTA before you're hit, you know, with a big old $300 bill you weren't expecting and that you didn't budget for, okay? Moving on to mistake number three, don't trust Zillow, okay? When you're getting ready to relocate, you already have a million and one things to do. Do not waste your time looking at homes on Zillow or Realtor.com or Truly Okay that may or may not even be for sale anymore. Okay, these sites are notoriously bad at updating their website and they often show homes that aren't even available, okay? And that's not the only thing though. Also, the property taxes, square footage, and Zestimate values are completely wrong 
much of the time, all right? According to Ryan Lundquist, the Zestimate is really hit and miss. Sometimes it's spot on, right, with value, and others it's off by hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? Now, this is especially critical right now because we have a very volatile market, okay? Home prices are dropping every day in some places. Your best bet for accurate information is to set up a search through us so you can get immediate updates and know the minute new listings show up. Also, when you get to the process of looking at homes and submitting offers and you're like, hey, how much should I offer? Well, part of our service to you is we will provide you with a comprehensive price analysis of every home, okay? You don't have to spend your time worrying about whether a home is overpriced. And by all means, right, throw that Zillow Zestimate out the window, okay? You can have confidence knowing we will provide the market information you need. Okay, moving on to mistake number four. Here it is, not using a local lender. If you've never bought a home before, you may not know that you and your lender will be working closely together for much of the time. You want to make sure that you have a lender who will be available on the spot, okay? Not just to you, but to everyone involved in your home purchase, okay? That's going to include your own realtor, right? As well as any listing agents who may want to contact the lender with questions about how solid you are as a buyer. Big bank, national lenders, okay, are not going to have that kind of access or availability, right? They might respond by email Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends, you're on your own. And unfortunately, the process of buying a home doesn't stick, okay, to Monday through Friday business hours. Now, a good local lender, on the other hand, will text you on the weekend and have quicker response times. Local lenders have the ability to act fast, and a lot of times that is an absolute must in the home buying process. Danielle Keach describes how, with local lenders, you avoid those dreaded customer service lines. She goes on to describe how your messages won't sit in a voice mailbox unanswered in Instead, you'll have a cell number you can call or text at a moment's notice. Now, you also want a lender with clout and influence within their own company, okay? Not just for your own sake, but also because listing agents want to work with buyers whose lenders have a record of getting deals done. Keach explains that that reassures the listing agent and the seller that a sale will close. Now, guess what you're gonna find with our preferred lenders? Well, <laughs> that exact level of clout and influence. So at the end of the day, can't emphasize this enough, okay? The people you work through and with throughout this whole process can make or break the transaction for you. Which brings us to mistake number five, not using a buyer's agent. Now, you're probably thinking this is the moment I'm going to stand here right and toot my own horn. Well, I'm not much. <laughs> we recently spoke with a buyer who insisted on working directly with the seller's agent, okay? That's just how things were done in his state. He had bought and sold many homes that way and he wasn't changing now. Well, if you're coming from a state other than Texas, you might be used to that approach, okay? It's called dual agency and for many states, it's the norm. You simply call the number on the sign or in the listing and you work directly with the listing agent. Well, in Texas, things don't work that way and of course, as we all know, Texas is always better. Well, here's the thing though. Why wouldn't you want an agent whose sole job is to represent you and only you. Now, a recent article by NerdWallet comments on the topic saying, some home shoppers might think they can take a shortcut to making an offer on a home by working with the home's listing agent instead of hiring a buyer's agent. He goes on to point out, home buyers and sellers have inherently distinct goals, okay? Especially when it comes to negotiating a purchase price. He sums it up this way, having the listing agent represent you as a buyer is an example of dual agency, which is illegal in some states and at the very least creates a conflict of interest. You want your own buyer's agent who's firmly on your side. Now, Texas is in fact one of the states where dual agency is illegal. So instead of driving through neighborhoods and endlessly calling agents to see if homes are still available, let us handle that, okay? We can let you know right away if a home is available or not. And by the way, with us as your agent, you'll have all homes that meet your criteria sent directly to you the minute they're listed. Wait, that was me tooting my own horn, wasn't it? Another reason you'll especially wanna have an agent representing you when you're coming from out of state is because depending on where you're coming from, the process may be completely different here. For example, you know, where you're from, it may be common for the buyer to pay the title policy and home warranty. Well, in Texas, it's more common for the seller to pay these expenses. You need an experienced agent who's in your corner and knows Texas real estate, and that's us. Oh man, I just did it again. If you're in that position, you know, you're moving to Dallas and you need a buyer's agent, we'd love to be the ones to help. Check out our Let's Find Home questionnaire and let's get started. Oh man, that's pretty shameless. I just did it the third time. All right, moving on to our sixth and final mistake, look out for the scam, okay? This is by far the most expensive and disastrous mistake of all, okay? You have three different major exposures here depending on your plan once you get to Dallas, okay? So the first one happens when a buyer is trying to secure temporary housing. Okay, I'm talking here about something like an Airbnb, 
you know, or a vacation rental. It might be because the date of closing and moving here didn't line up perfectly. Maybe, you know, you just need a week or two. Well, you need to be aware of the vacation rental scam, okay? Even if you think you're on a safe platform, even short-term rentals like Airbnbs have fraud on them as well. Rocky Trafari tells HuffPost how vacation rental scams can happen on any online platform. He describes how scammers are constantly testing new methods of deception with hopes of luring in unsuspecting victims. So Airbnbs, not exempt from fraud, okay? <laughs> when it comes to temporary housing, here are some red flags that you might be looking at a scam, okay? Are you ready? Number one, the listing seems too good to be true. Number two, the host pushes for communication outside of the booking platform. Okay, number three, the host asks for direct payment, again, outside of the booking platform. Number four, the host pressures you to book. Number five, there are discrepancies between the property's listings on different platforms. Number six, the language and writing is just slightly off. All right, well, your next level of exposure is in the situation where you wanna rent for a year first instead of buy, okay? So you can have time to get the lay of the land. Could also be that you were relocated so quickly there was just no way you could buy a home in time. Well, the rental market is expensive here in Dallas. But suddenly, lo and behold, you find some deals that are astonishingly affordable with good reason. <laughs> if you're in this situation, exercise caution, okay? These kinds of deals are often a scam. You tend to find them in droves through places like Facebook or Craigslist, right? You're gonna hear stories like, like the rent is lower because my mother-in-law just went into a nursing home and we're trying to get her home leased quickly. Read my lips, that's a scam. Here are some red flags you need to be on the lookout for when it comes to long-term rentals. Number one, they don't wanna meet you in person. They tell you to go to the home and look in the windows. Number two, they want you to move in immediately without ever seeing the property. Number three, they ask for rent or a security deposit before signing a lease. Number four, again, like the other one, the price is just too good. Number five, the listing has typos or poor grammar. Number six, there's no tenant screening process. Number seven, they tell you to wire money and then they'll send you the keys. If you're suspicious, one thing you can do is see if the home is listed for sale, okay? Because this is often where the scam takes place because the home is already vacant, right? These scammers, they're out there and they're tricky, okay? Your best bet is to go strictly through MLS listings and work with an agent, okay? Now, the third scam, your third level of exposure you need to be on the lookout for is when you're buying and you're getting close to closing. Typically, you're very stressed at this time. You're preoccupied. The way this pans out is you'll get very insistent phone calls from the title company saying you need to wire your down payment right now, okay? They will sound very official. They'll say they're from the title company and they'll threaten that if you don't wire the money, you will not close on time. Another way they may approach you is through email, okay? They'll ask you to fill out a form and wire the money, okay? No, so imagine if you had a $100,000 down payment and you fell prey to this, okay? It would be devastating and it happens all the time, okay? So like Rocky Trafari says, scammers are constantly testing new methods of deception with hopes of luring in unsuspecting victims. Well, if I've scared the tar out of you by now, good. <laughs> you need to have that level of caution. And maybe at this point you're like, I don't even know where to begin in buying a home out of state. Well, lucky for you, we've made a video telling exactly how buying out of state works that you can watch here. In the meantime, Wendy out.